So let's get a read on this with uh, some experts who can sort of chronicle where we're going. Lenore Hawkins joins us. We have Mark Lachini, Ted Oakley. Uh, Lenore, your take on whether cooler heads prevail. We had these scares before where it looked like a deal was close. Just last Friday, they were intimating as much and all of a sudden this. So what do you what do you say? Well, I think <clears throat> Trump and his administration has to be eyeing 2020. And you really do not want to hurt the American economy or have the stock market looking terrible as you're heading into a new election cycle. So <clears throat> I'm thinking, I'm hoping that cooler heads are going to prevail. Because like you said, this really is harmful for the American people. I mean, when you're talking about tariffs, it's kind of like negotiating who, who's going to get pieces of a pie and you threaten to throw half of it in the trash. At the end of the day, everybody just gets less pie. Well, I would take the entire pie myself, but that's just another <laughs> issue for another day. Um, you know, when I'm looking at some of the particulars on this, Mark, some Dow issues that were down, and, and precipitously so early at the open, are back. I'm talking about Chevron and McDonald's and the Dow, Walt Disney, United Health Group, I think Pfizer's among those. Uh, and some of the issues that were really beaten down have come off their worst levels. It's still early. 250 points on the slide is nothing to sneeze at here. But what do you what do you see going on? Well, Neil, I think it's a function of investors, you know, selling first and asking questions later. So the reaction we saw really coming overnight by way of the pressure that was put on pre-market activity down over 500 uh, is being relieved somewhat. Uh, we know that some of the market's activity here so far this year has been sort of baking in the expectation that we're going to have some conclusion to the, the negotiation process. And it was speculated it could be as soon as this Friday. Now that puts a little more uncertainty into whether it occurs at all, let alone this Friday. And as a consequence, the reaction was uh, for, to expect the worst and hope for the best. And now perhaps I think investors are seeing those cooler <laughs> heads prevailing with regard to the likelihood that something ultimately is getting done. And maybe this is just posturing on the part of President Trump to say he can demonstrate that he really put his hand heavily into this deal to make sure we got the very best out of it that we possibly could. Well, Teddy, it was clearly that as the president was getting very uh, impatient about the, the pace of this and wondering if the Chinese were deliberately dragging their feet. We'll see if they respond to this or, or it looks bad on the global stage if they cave to this or, or frantically try to cobble together something that uh, they have their pride and all that. So I get that. But how do you see this sorting out or do you? Well, I see it sorting out, Neil, in that, you know, he normally goes to an extreme on anything. And then he and then when you come back to the center, they think they got an OK deal. <laughs> and my guess is that's <laughs> That's what's happening here uh, in this whole situation before it's all over with. You know, Lenore, I was looking at some of the particulars in all of this, and I, in the middle of this, interest rates are sliding. Obviously, as a safe haven, a place to go. We're under 2.5%. And, a and what, I, what, what I took from that was you, you are getting less yield on a 10-year note right now than you are for money borrowed overnight on the federal funds level. I don't know if that means anything, but it's just weird, you know? Yeah, it, well, the, when you look at the bond market, the bond market is not telling you the same story as the stock market. The stock market saying it's great. The bond market, on the other hand, is saying I've got some concerns. But even within the stock market, what you're really seeing is a handful of guys that are doing really well and pushing those indexes up. When the S&P last week made all new highs, there was only about 9% of the stocks within the S&P were making those highs. That is typically, that's a fairly narrow group. And when you see a narrow grouping like that, it's, it's not it really, that's not a strong market to be looking at. You know, Mark, too, I noticed that the, what's lost in the sauce and, uh, is the fact that we have different vibes coming out of the White House. Obviously, the president, the buck stops with him. His sentiment is the final sentiment as to where these talks go. But literally just hours earlier, you had the Treasury Secretary Mnuchin, Mick Mulvaney, his chief of staff, you had Larry Kudlow, all saying that positive developments of the talks and how they're progressing. Then you had the U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer saying, you know, just the opposite. It is clear to me from that that the president is, is taking his cues from the tough stance that Lighthizer is, is is issuing. What do you make of that? 
I would agree with you wholeheartedly. I believe that he believes Robert Lighthizer is his representative of not only choice, but as well the lead negotiator in this process. And he is taking his cue from what Lighthizer is coming back and reporting on with regard to how the process is, is developing. And so as a consequence, I think his tweets are merely a reflection of the fact that Lighthizer, uh, uh, Heiser that is, uh, has not seen the kind of progress being made or it's too slow. Or, in fact, we've seen the walking back of some concessions that were already made that is unnerving to the president, which, like the other guests had mentioned, is highly cognizant of the fact that this was a campaign promise. And as we're heating up here in political season toward the 2020 election, wants this to be a victory lap for him, not something that stays open-ended. All right. Um, guys, we we're waiting to hear from the president. It's uh, technically his chance to give the commander-in-chief's trophy to the U.S. Uh, military academy football team, but uh, invariably he might refer to developments including what's happening on, on the trade front. Ted, um, do you expect him to or do you think he'll just sort of let the comments and the tweets lie and see what happens? Well, I think he probably will more than likely. I think the biggest thing on it, Neil, was that if I, if I understand it correctly, that the Chinese were going to have to change a couple of laws. And I think that was embarrassing to them, probably, and they've got to find a way to work around that. I think that sounded to me like what happened. And so uh, I don't think he'll get a lot more aggressive than he was in the tweet. All right. We'll watch it closer. Guys, thank you very much.